Now going to look at the flower pot and add a little bit of ultramarine to the light red and go under the ridge again. And I think it should have some dark down the side. So I'm taking the brush in this position and I'm pulling it down, getting a bit of texture and also pulling away where is going to be a cast shadow over it. And then a shadow area underneath. Mixing a little bit of the ultramarine in with the red again and following the curve. I keep the shadow uneven so that it echoes the foliage mass above. I'm going to go on to the other little pot, which will be quite dark actually because there's a lot of shadow there with this outcrop of light foliage in front. And crisscrossing into some of those leaf shapes. And then perhaps adding a drop in of the same mix and just bringing in the darker area where there's the overhang of the leaves. I'm going to look at the greens again and build up some more intensity on this side. Getting my negative shapes in there. and the darks against the lighter wall. And the darks here where they're in a little bit of shadow. Very random strokes, I'm only giving the effect of the foliage coming down. I don't want to draw leaf after leaf, I just want to show you how to get those negatives and how this will come out towards us down here, crisscrossing outwards and these darks against the wall behind. Now we can go into some darker greens. A little bit of blue will increase that intensity. And again, I'm going over this area, but not completely. So you'll see how I've done tone after tone, reducing the size of the area I cover with each dark tone. And this really will emphasize those negatives because we're looking into the absolute dark shadow recess in there. And up here it could be darker as well at the top. And I'm going to put a little bit of the glaze over the pot which is just the light red again, to increase the tone there and to bring it together. Now if we look at the wall, a little bit of ultramarine and burnt umber. I did have a selection of brushes for this, but I am still using the first one, the large worker. I can go on my toes with this one and get the most delicate of lines for those shadow recess shapes within the stones. And then I can wash it when I want to using a sideways movement sweep across. And being a large worker it will cover quite a, an area. 
I'm going to cut in again around some of these lights. And then wet the brush and gently graze away to get that texture on the stonework. I want some more depth of tone between them. Mix a little bit more of just the two colours, the ultramarine and the brown, and get some depth of tone in here. Adding a little bit more of those two colours together to get them darker, I can drop in in certain areas to watch it blend out and just get a bit more interest. A bit of dark there would be nice. And even take it up here where I'd like a rich area. Now I'm going to just increase some of the tonal areas of these flowers. A little bit of dark tone beneath some of them. A little bit of white paper there I can use just to take that up and actually a larger one here would be quite nice and that gives that quite pretty and a few more of the blues. I just look for areas that have the white paper showing through and touch that with the blue. And now a few shadow sides to some of the leaves at the top. And over on the other one as well, again a few shadows. And another cast shadow to increase some of the tone here. So cast shadow there, there. Just intensify some of the shadow recesses in the wall. This lemon yellow glaze is very dilute but 
on the final ones I make it just a little bit more concentrated so that the light catches just some of those leaves quite strongly. So there we have the counter change. We're seeing the dark leaves against the light background, the lighter leaves against a darker tone, and you've also got your negative shadow recess shapes that occur within the structure, and that'll help you get the depth and the feeling of the three-dimensional effect we want with our paintings. I often find when I've finished, or think I've finished a painting, that if I spend a little time living with it, I can look back and think, I'll just enhance that, I'll just bring out that contrast, I'll just add a little bit extra. When I'm looking at this now, after having a few minutes actually reassessing the composition, I feel I'd like to do something in that area there, and I'd like to produce a little bit more intense tone in some areas, perhaps at the base. So having a few moments to think about it does help. I also perhaps would like just something there. It just helps to live with your paintings for a little bit before you put the final touches on, perhaps a bit, a bit of dark in there, because it is these final contrasts that can bring it alive. So I'm going to just go into a shape here, have some sort of stem holding it, and I feel that helps it. And another little dark in here, and perhaps just a rich dark down the base here. and that will help. And a cast shadow here again, and just a tiny bit there. So they're only very minute additions, and perhaps even a little bit more depth of tone on some of the silhouettes of these leaves at the edge. Again, I'm looking at the brush and the shape the point of the brush is. And I'd like just a, there could be a little white flower there actually. And another dark in here, perhaps increase that one a bit. Just helping some of those darks. You have to be careful not to overdo it, but I do think sometimes just increasing the contrast a bit can help. And even a little bit of warmth on the surface at the front might also. Just a gentle feeling of warmth coming across here. When it dries out, everything dries that little bit paler, but I think that just helps a little. Hardly touching it at all, just stopping that paper from glaring too much. And again at the edges you can just, if you're only down to water at those edges, diffuse them off like that, and that just adds that little glow at the base. So now if I look at it, I can see that I have done my contrast here of the simple shapes as they're in the background of the dark against the light. Again, simple shapes here. What I've left is quite simple to show the counter change to you. And then if you look into the depth, how I've helped those stems, you could, if you wish, if you feel they are a bit strong, sometimes just glaze across with a green to stop them standing out quite so much. And then we've got this wall behind supporting that light side. And I felt going across, it was advantageous to just put that extra little pot plant at the side, and that gives us a relationship. I hope you've enjoyed watching and that perhaps you'll have a go at this yourself. Now available on DVD. Try these techniques yourself at home whenever you wish. The extended version of today's workshop is now available to order on DVD from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.